I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. <clears throat> Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Christ, the King of angels, O, o come, come, let us adore, adore him. him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Christ, the King of angels, O, o come, come, let us adore, adore him. I will always give thanks unto the Lord. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, praise the Lord with me, and let us magnify his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. Yea, he delivered me out of all my fear. They had an eye unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Lo, the poor crieth, and the Lord heareth him. Yea, and saveth him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord tarrieth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O taste and see, how gracious the Lord is, 
Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O fear the Lord, ye that are his saints, for they that fear him lack nothing. The lions do lack, and suffer hunger, but they who seek the Lord shall want no manner of thing that is good. Come, ye children, and hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What is man that lusteth to live? And who would fain see good days? Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips that they speak no guile. Eschew evil, and do good. Seek peace, and ensue it. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. The countenance of the Lord is against them that do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth them, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a contrite heart, and will save such as be of an humble spirit. Great are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of all. He keepeth all his bones, so that not one of them is broken. But misfortune shall slay the ungodly, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord delivereth the souls of his servants, and all they that put their trust in him shall not be destitute. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is written in the sixth chapter of the second book of Kings, beginning at the eighth verse. The prophet protected by the angels of the Lord. In those days, the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant, the man of God, was risen early, and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto the prophet, Alas, my master, how shall we go? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Here endeth the first lesson. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The Father of an infinite majesty. Thine adorable, true, and only Son. Also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. 
Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. And thou tookest upon thee to deliver man. Thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thy heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee. And we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The second lesson is written in the twelfth chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles, beginning at the first verse. Peter delivered from prison by an angel of the Lord. In those days, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have him brought forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And Peter went out, and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out, and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel, and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Here ended the second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. And hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant. To perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, Give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray.
O God, who of thine ineffable providence dost vouchsafe to send thy holy angels to be the guardians of thy faithful people, grant unto us, thy humble servants, that we may ever be defended by their protection and rejoice in their everlasting fellowship. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who hath safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by thy governance may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. O everlasting God, who hast ordained and constituted the services of angels and men, in a wonderful order. Mercifully grant that as thy holy angels always do thee service in heaven, so by thy appointment they may succor and defend us on earth. Through thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. The lesson appointed for the epistle is taken from the twelfth chapter of the Revelation to St. John the Divine, beginning at the seventh verse. In those days there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. 
Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea! For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Here endeth the lesson. The Holy Gospel is written in the 18th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. Glory, Glory be to thee, O Lord. At that time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into the like halt or main, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets, and I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Over the ages, uh, preachers and teachers have struggled with the task of trying to explain the Holy Trinity, the nature of God in three persons. And there have been various uh, 
systems or diagrams or outlines or even graphics, pictures if you will, of how the Holy Trinity might be presented. Of course, the, the standard one, which appears frequently in Holy Scripture and in all of our liturgies and uh, in the images and uh, the, the ideas that we have in our mind, is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's a complicated issue, and uh, if you want to see how complicated it can be, all you need to do is find a copy of the Athanasian Creed and read it through a couple times. And if you understand it any better after reading it several times, you're a better person than I am. Others have uh, offered other diagrams or other ways of understanding the Holy Trinity. Uh, in place of the Father, they say it's the mind of God or the thoughts of God. And in the place of the Son, they speak of the Word, which is, of course, very biblical. And in the place of Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, they speak of the will or the work of God. I was very lucky in my early ministry to know Brother David, who at one time was the Superior General of the Franciscans, the Anglican Franciscans worldwide. And he said that the common way the Franciscans described the Holy Trinity was lover, beloved, and ground of love. God the Father being the lover of all things, and through love he made things, that God the Son, or the Word of God, is the beloved, the object of God the Father's love, and that the Holy Spirit is the ground of love, the love that passes between the two of them, and that overflows into all of creation. Using the same gifts of uh, symbolism and analogy, that lead people to make the, those uh, unusual descriptions of the Holy Trinity and the standard description of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, uh, others have taken it a step further and tried to explain the existence of angels as being a manifestation or an appearance of the Holy Spirit. Well, on first glance, that uh, looks like a promising description. Uh, angels, in most of the stories that we have of angels, are doing God's work. They're called in Holy Scripture ministering spirits. So we could say since they're doing God's work, it's God himself doing work as the Holy Spirit manifested as an angel, as Michael or Raphael or Oriel or any of the other of the nine orders of angels. And they're ministering spirits. Their God ministering to the rest of his creation. However, that uh, description breaks down, as any minor theologian might tell you, and all you need do is look again at the lesson from the Revelation to St. John that we heard read in morning prayer, or that we heard read as the lesson at uh, the anti-communion. There was war in heaven. God cannot war against himself. And if the angels are merely manifestations of the third person of the Holy Trinity, how can you explain there being war in heaven between the angels of God and the angels of a disobedient and uh, cast out angel named Lucifer or Satan? or the great dragon, as John refers to him in the Revelation to St. John the Divine. No, angels are not a manifestation of God, or an appearance of God, or an epiphany of God, although in essence they are God's ambassador, they are God's representative, they bring God in his fullness, just as the ambassador to Japan takes the authority of the United States government to Japan in all its truth and all its power. Now, angels are creatures. They were made by God to be his ministers. And like human beings, they also were given free will. They were made before us, but not given the same status in creation as human beings. As it says many times in, in, in Holy Scripture, 
God made the angels a little lower than man. A little lower in the sense that man is his beloved creature. Man has been adopted and championed as sons and daughters of God. The angels were given free will, and Lucifer, the most glorious and the most beloved, the most luminous, the most beautiful of all the angels, took his free will and decided to follow it on his own and not the will of God, not to do God's ministration but his own. And the war broke out in heaven the first time, and Satan was cast out and into this world where, indeed, he brought disobedience, the essence of evil, the full nature of sin. He passed it on to Eve and to Adam and to each and every one of us in original sin. It's good for us to hear this lesson and to know and to acknowledge that the angels are creatures and that evil exists in this world because of their disobedience and our following that disobedience. It's good to know that there's war in heaven and to know that the war that we participate in in this world in trying to overcome sin and to embrace the fullness of life in Christ Jesus our Lord is an explanation of why there is evil in the world. We see the angels so often as protectors and as deliverers as those bringing the word of God as brought to Mary that she would bear a son, as those who in ultimate truth and in the fullness of time will actually slay Satan as is shown in so many of the artistic renderings of Saint Michael, killing Satan, killing the devil and the cast out angel. On this day we acknowledge the angels who were faithful. We acknowledge the chief of the angels, Saint Michael, and all those who follow him. And we recognize that we are protected, that we are enlightened, and we are delivered by them. On this day, I ask that you remember all churches and all institutions under the name and title and protection of Saint Michael and all angels. Amen. God is not unrighteous that he will forget your works and labor that proceedeth of love, which love ye have showed for his name's sake, who have ministered unto the saints and yet do minister. I bid your prayers for this world that we acknowledge and proclaim the truth that God's ministering angels uh, carry out their work and their office in all corners of this world, not just in the faithful and Christian world and in church congregations and among Christian families, but in all the places in which humans dwell. As the angels led Cyrus, to do the work of God in ancient history, so too we know that God is working in all the manifestations of human power and human relationships. I bid your prayers for the church, acknowledging that we who are called to be ministers look to the angels for guidance and for examples of how we might do that ministry. And I bid your prayers for the repose of the souls of the faithful departed. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word 
and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Visit, we beseech thee, O Lord, this place, and drive from it all the snares of the enemy. Let thy holy angels dwell herein to preserve us with peace, and may thy blessing be upon us evermore, through thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.